The long-tailed degree distribution structure of real-world complex networks has implications for their robustness. For example, since these networks are largely structured around hubs, they're vulnerable to targeted hub failure. An example of this is on the web. When large, highly connected websites are targeted by malicious people via attacks called distributed denial of service attacks. Now, if my web page goes down, nobody's really going to get upset because it doesn't have a lot of links coming into it. Whereas if a big website like Yahoo goes down, a very highly connected website, that's going to cause a lot more havoc on the web. That's true in all networks that have this kind of hub structure. We talked about this, for instance, with respect to airline networks, where if a hub city is having bad weather, causing flights to be delayed, that's going to have effects that percolate throughout the system. Similarly, in biological networks, the extinction of a hub species, whether it be a predator or a prey species in a food web, is going to have huge implications for the entire food web. The same thing goes for other kinds of biological networks. And it may be that a network approach to thinking about biology is going to end up being more important for understanding health and well-being than, than the genetic sequencing of the Human Genome Project. Although these networks are vulnerable to targeted hub failure, they're also robust to random node failure. If a single node becomes unusable for some reason, since most nodes have very low degree, it's not going to have a big effect on the network. In the internet, for example, internet servers are going down all the time, being taken out of commission for temporary periods, but because of the long-tailed structure of these networks, such random node failure, failure often doesn't have much of an effect. Unless nodes can cause other nodes to fail. And then we can get something called cascading failure. An example, the power grid. Here's a satellite picture of a region in the Northeast US and Canada before and after a huge electrical blackout that occurred in August 2003. Evidently, a power station in Ohio got overloaded because of a downed power line. It transferred its load to another power station that itself got overloaded and shut down, and so on in a kind of domino effect in which there was a cascade of failures bringing, out, bringing down a lot of the electrical grid of the northeastern United States. You can see before the blackout, lots of lights here, much diminished here on the day of the blackout. So that's a common example of a cascading failure. Cascading failure can also affect economic systems, such as banks. And you can see here in the years from 2007 to 2010, a sort of domino effect of banks failing. Once one bank fails, it causes an effect throughout the bank network. If the bank network is closely interconnected and has this uh, cascading failure possibility, we can get this kind of cascade of bank failures. And we see similar patterns of cascading failures in all kinds of systems, ranging from the body to ecological systems to computer and communication networks, wars, and so on. Now I want to talk a little bit about the implications of the long-tail distribution for thinking about risk. It's been traditional to model risk using normal distributions, or these bell curve distributions. These are different shapes of, of these normal distributions. You can see some of them have high peaks, some of them have lower peaks and wider and so on. But all of them have the feature that events in the tail of the distribution are highly unlikely. However, if you look at a long tail distribution like this one, it turns out that events in the tail are more likely than in a normal distribution, sometimes much more likely. So if you're thinking about risk, for instance, in a financial market, in a housing market, in any kind of economic system, or even earthquake risk or something like that, if your underlying model is a normal distribution, a bell curve, you're going to assume that 
risks out in the tail have very low probability. But if your model was actually one of these long tail distributions, you would be much more concerned about possible risks because they'd have a higher probability. Some people have called this situation, the long tail distribution, more normal than normal because they're so common in complex networks that are ubiquitous in all kinds of different domains. This sort of thinking was behind Paul Krugman's quote in the New York Times in 2009, Paul Krugman being a Nobel Prize winning economist. And he said, few economists saw our current crisis coming, but this predictive failure was the least of the field's problems. More important was the profession's blindness to the very possibility of catastrophic failures in a market economy. So he's talking right there about what people think about the tails of these distributions, these risk distributions. How much probability is down here? Well, there's a lot more if you assume that you have a power law or other long tail distribution than if you have a normal distribution. And what Krugman is saying is that the profession of economics was probably more fixated on modeling risk and other factors using normal or Gaussian distributions, whereas they should have been using these more long-tailed distributions. You've all seen the phrase too big to fail with respect to large banks or other financial institutions. But an alternative idea put forth in an editorial by Duncan Watts is that instead of worrying about things that are too big, big to fail, we should worry about institutions that are too complex to exist. Because complexity seems to produce such power law or long tail distributions rather than normal distributions. And in this article, Watts talks about how the power grid, economic systems, bank networks, and so on can become so complex that catastrophic failure is sometimes inevitable because of the long tail of risk. Well, let's end with another quote from Duncan Watts. So far in this lecture, we've focused on structure of networks. We've looked at small world structure, scale-free and long tail degree distributions, and so on. We haven't really talked much about dynamics on networks. So Duncan says, Next to the mysteries of dynamics on a network, whether it be epidemics of disease, cascading failures in power systems, or the outbreak of revolutions, the problems of networks that we have encountered up to now are just pebbles on the seashore. Well, Duncan said this 10 years ago, and within the last 10 years, a huge amount of work has been done on studying how dynamics occur on networks, how information spreads, how epidemics occur, how cascading failures happen. We're not gonna cover the, those topics in this course, but hopefully in a future course. And I'd also like to mention that on the course materials page, there's many references that talk about what's been happening in the last 10 years of network science in terms of dynamics, particularly, that you might find interesting.